Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Today is 10-10. The birthday of Jacob. October 10, 2003. 16 years ago, Jacob was born. Okay? 10-10. And as somebody commented before, you know, the 10-10, October 10, he was also born with 10 toes and 10 fingers. So the 10 10 was significant. Okay, anyway. So, um, oh, hi, Erwin. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to express my condolences again to the passing of your mom. Okay, she is in our prayers. Okay, so today, today is what day? Yeah, what day of the week is it? It's Thursday. And so talking about the rosary, what mystery of the rosary do we contemplate on Thursday? Luminous. Luminous. So let's explain a little bit what luminous is. Okay? The luminous mysteries of the rosary were not part of the original three right? mysteries. This was added in the year 2002 by Saint John Paul II, the great saint and devotee to the Blessed Mother that Saint uh, John Paul II was. Um, he he added um, he added this this uh, new set of five mysteries, which he called the mysteries of light. Mysteries of Light or the Luminous Mystery. Now, wh why do you think is, is, is it named that? Why did John Paul call this new set of mysteries the Luminous Mysteries or the Mysteries of Light? Does anybody know? And what do they cover? What are the five <coughs> Luminous Mysteries? Can we enumerate? What's the first one? Baptism, Baptism of our Lord. Second? Huh? The wedding at Cana, or also known as Christ's self-manifestation. Then the third is <coughs> proclamation of the kingdom of God. Then the fourth, <coughs> the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. Then the fifth, the institution of the Holy Eucharist. So if you look at these five luminous mysteries, what is the underlying theme behind them what are they all about hmm? what are they all about huh? Joe Jesus is life well all of them are about Jesus is life right but what particular segment or part of Jesus is life are covered in this five luminous mysteries his Jana his public life Okay? His public life. Because the joyful mysteries were about what? His birth and his childhood, right? And then the sorrowful mysteries are? His passion and death. His passion and, death. and the glorious mysteries? Resurrection. The resurrection all the way to the other yeah, ascension, descent of the Holy Spirit, right? assumption of Our Lady. Now, but we don't have any mysteries that covered his public life. And that's why John Paul II thought, well, this is appropriate to do. That we also contemplate the mysteries that occurred during his public life. <coughs> during the time of his life where our Lord came out in the open to preach, to be the light of the world. That's why it's called Luminous Mysteries. Because it's all about our Lord being the light of the world. Where... He came out publicly in order to reveal the Godhead to us. Okay? It's the revelation of the Godhead to us. It's, the, it's to complete the revelation that has started and began from the Old Testament. Right? And which was completed. Or more or less, uh, well, not completed in the sense that that's the end of it. But rather, uh, fulfilled rather in the New Testament. Where our Lord came down to earth in order to confirm 
what the Old Testament prophets and kings and judges have already foretold about himself and about God. Okay? So he came to fulfill those and he came to show us more of what the Old Testament cannot effectively reveal or could not effectively tell us about God. So <clears throat> these are the mysteries that we contemplate on what days? of the week huh thursdays. on thursdays and thursdays. thursdays only see <laughs> so that is that's the exceptional uh, uh that's the exception among the, mis the 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 other mysteries you contemplate them at least twice a week right but luminous mysteries we do them on thursdays of course it doesn't mean to say you will only do them on thursday you can say extra rosaries along the way during the week and you can contemplate on all the different mysteries, right? Back in the day, we used to, uh, the rosary was actually the, uh, recited uh, all together in one day. See, all the 15 mysteries. Okay? And, uh, and uh, that was the way it was. That's why uh, it was quite long. But, you know, nowadays we uh, were only encouraged to say one uh, mystery a day. But it doesn't hurt to be praying uh, more mysteries than that right and that is why sometimes we do that we pray more uh, mysteries of the rosary in a day like when we go on trips or when we go every day right that's right when we go to mass every day on the way there we already pray the rosary and sometimes we pray uh, along the road if we have a longer trip to go we pray extra parts of the rosary you want to know how many how many rosaries i do in a day Huh? Any guess about how many rosaries I do? Me, personally, every day. How many? Seven? Seven rosaries? You are a little uh, off the mark. <laughs> okay, you don't know this, perhaps, about me, but uh, let me tell you. I, if I could count, <clears throat> <clears throat> I do about ten rosaries a day. That is because, of course, I sometimes do it faster, the other rosaries, right? But, yeah, it's a very good practice to pray plenty, plenty of rosaries in a day, you know? And you can do that too. You don't have to be saying the complete rosaries, but mysteries of the rosary. I mean, how many seconds, really, how many minutes does it take to say one decade? It's very easy, okay? Oh, you gotta go, mommy? Bye-bye. Okay, say goodbye to mommy here. She has to leave. Okay, so let's talk about... Oh, we got about uh, eight minutes. Talk about the first luminous mystery is the... Baptism. baptism of our Lord. So what can we picture with the baptism of the Lord? How can we imagine or contemplate uh, the scene of the baptism of our Lord? What was, what was going on there? What was going on? Where was our Lord... Uh, during that baptism, what happened? Do you remember? He went to the Jordan River. He went to the Jordan River, right? The Jordan River. What was so significant about the Jordan River? What was happening there? John the Baptist was there. John the Baptist was doing what? Baptizing people. Baptizing people. Was baptizing people. Baptism is the initiation, right? The sacrament of baptism as we have it now is the initiation into our Christian life, right? When we become part of the family of God, children of God. But John was not doing that kind of baptism. What was he doing? It was called the baptism of what? Okay, he was just calling people to repentance. It was a baptism of repentance. It was an initiation to a penitential kind of life in order to clean themselves of sin so that they can prepare to receive our lord who was coming right that's why john was the was the uh, voice uh, crying out in the desert to to uh, proclaim the good news of the coming of our lord he was a precursor he was the one announcing that our lord was coming right and so our lord thought it best that okay uh, to initiate 
his, his uh, public ministry, he himself was going to show the good example of initiating things, initiating, inaugurating not only his public life, but he also wanted to show the example of inaugurating the life of a Christian through baptism. So he himself submitted himself to that ritual of John the Baptist to be baptized. So we can imagine our Lord, who is the Lord of Lords and God himself, okay, humbly submitting himself to the authority of his cousin, the son of Elizabeth, his own cousin. That's why St. John, you can imagine the humility of St. John also telling our Lord, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I think there's something wrong with this picture here, right? I shouldn't be the one baptizing you. You should be the one baptizing me. And he says, you know, I can't even remove the straps of your sandals, right? When he was talking about, when he was asked, who are you? Are you the Christ? And said, no, 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 no. See, I'm not the Christ. I'm not even worthy of untying the straps of the sandals of the Christ. <clears throat> I must decrease. He must increase. Okay? Beautiful words of St. John, right? The Baptist. I must decrease. He must increase. He, meaning Jesus. I am just a poor shadow of the real light of the world who is now here in front of me and, and asking that I baptize him. Right? So St. John, you can just imagine the, the, the embarrassment perhaps of St. John, the humility of St. John, to be face to face with his God, his cousin, all right, but he's still his God, right? Submitting himself to be baptized by a lowly creature that he considered himself to be. But nevertheless, our Lord told him, just do this for me. Just do this for me. Because I want to show other people good example. Of the baptism that I am to baptize them with sacramentally. So our Lord submits himself. John the Baptist pours all, uh, immerses our Lord in the Jordan River. Because that was the ritual. That was how the ritual went. And then as our Lord emerged from that river. What was heard was God proclaiming the divinity of his son when he told audibly um, manifested to everyone there witnessing the baptism this is my beloved son hear him okay? this is my beloved son hear him and then St. John St. John as proclaimed to everybody else there as Jesus was walking away from the Jordan. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Here He is now. He just emerged from this baptism and there He is on His way, ready to proclaim to the rest of the world about the good news. And there were two people who were disciples of St. John, who upon hearing his announcement, Behold the Lamb of God, decided to follow Jesus right away. Who were those two? St. John and St. Andrew. Andrew, the first apostles of Jesus. John and Andrew. And they were walking, pacing Jesus behind him. Right? And then Jesus felt that there were people following and he goes and turns around and asks why are you following me and then the two disciples didn't know what to say uh, well, 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 John, John said you are the Lamb of God maybe they were running these questions in their head but they were confused so uh, for, for, for lack of a better thing to say they asked well master where do you live Right? They couldn't quite maybe figure out how they were going to present themselves to Jesus. So they just said the next best thing they could utter was, uh, 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 where do you live? 
<laughs> and Jesus must have been amused, right, with their sense of with their sense of confusion. And all he could tell them was, "Oh, come and see. Come and see." And what did they see? Well, they saw what our Lord told them they were going to see, which was that, which was what rather. Well, the birds of the air have nests, foxes have dens, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. In other words, the two disciples saw nothing. Jesus had nothing. Jesus had no home. Jesus had nowhere to lay his head. He was at the mercy of anybody who could offer him some hospitality as he went about preaching the good news in a situation of complete poverty. These are very nice, beautiful scenes to recall as we contemplate the first luminous mystery. The beautiful events of our Lord's baptism the confirmation that he was the son of God and that from there he began his public ministry and starts calling the apostles to follow him. Okay? Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so that's it for us folks. Hope today we recall these mysteries while we pray the first luminous mystery and do our rosary better and better every day okay bye bye have a good day happy birthday again jacob bye bye, bye.